Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Before I go any further, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, brothers and sisters, welcome back. I've been away for a few days, I know. Um, as I've said before, I always uh, just wait on the Holy Spirit to do another video. And so, not last night, but two nights ago, I had a pretty awesome dream. So I wanted to come on here and share that with you. And I had already meant to do just a video reminding everyone that we are absolutely still very much in the season of the rapture. Honestly, I would say we're more so than, than we were a month ago, um, waiting on this next new moon to come. Um, just a couple of things about that. So if you look back at my videos back in the spring around the um, blood moon that happened around uh, Passover, Okay, I know some are calling it second Passover, some, some are calling it Passover. Um, I think there's a lot of evidence, though, that that was actually Passover, and then the one that's coming up here in November is the true Sukkot. And it mirrors the tetrad that we had at the beginning of the seven-year period of, you know, uh, plenty, if you will, and we're about to go into the seven-year period of famine. The two cows with the, with the seven in their... Uh, hair that was that were both born seven years ago so we've had a lot of signs and I feel like you know we just have to look for where everything confirms each other and I know I was equally looking with these uh, September dates um, with regard to the Jewish calendar because we thought maybe that's the way that the Lord was going to communicate to the Jewish people what was happening but if we look at his true calendar as I've mentioned Ricardo before I posted his uh, his videos on my community page from time from time after time, and um, he and then Kevin and Tony and myself, all back in the beginning of the spring, we were basically thinking this was the case. I was just kind of holding it open before the Lord to see. But here's one of the other indicators that I think that kind of shows that Feast of Trumpets hasn't even happened yet, and that is we're coming to the end of a Shemitah year, a new Shemitah cycle, and historically we know there are these huge economic massive events that happen, right? We didn't really see that. We had a, a, a bad day that Monday of Feast of Trumpets in the stock market, like a thousand points or something like that, and it went to bear market territory, but it, it, that wasn't monumental, right? That wasn't huge. And so, um, so I feel like one of the confirmations that we should get is this next week, because if we're, if we're coming up on the true Elul 29, then that would be October 24th, 25th, in that general area, and we should see some massive stock market something. So that could be Monday, that could be Tuesday. Again, not financial advice, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying that would be a good indicator that we're really, truly coming up on the Feast of Trumpets. Um, just because of that Shemitah cycle, and we see the economic stuff that happens at the end of a, of a, of a Shemitah. So, um, that's a reason, but also, again, just to go a little further on these tetrads, um, it's just the Lord is a God of order, right? And he, everything is just perfectly aligned. And so to start the seven year period, we had the tetrad in 2014-15, and now wouldn't it make sense to have another tetrad on Passover and Sukkot in 2021 and 2022? And, and if we look at, you know, Passover of May when that blood moon happened, as being one of those blood moons of the Tetrad, and then this coming Tabernacles, November 8th, the other blood moon, then then it does fit. Not to mention just the sun being in Aries, the ram, for Passover, right, for the first month of the year. So I, I'm just kind of, again, holding this all before the Lord. I think this is the case. I thought this was the case back in the spring, but I was just taking each high watt high watch date as they came and these are the next ones and these are honestly the ones that I truly believe are the right ones so um, yeah so we've got Feast of Trumpets October 26th 27th ish depending on where you are in the world of course we have to wait on the new moon to be sighted in Israel and then um, 10 days after that we'll have uh, Day of Atonement and then after that we'll have the uh, Sukkot Feast of Tabernacles. So, um, now, one thing I do want to address with this is, before I get to my dream, I'm going to get to my dream in just a second, um, 
is that if you do the calendar according to the sun being in Aries, I went back and looked at a lot of different things. And I think this might be one of the reasons that some of the watchmen are hesitant to um, go with this. And that is the year of the Revelation 12 sign. If you wait until the sun is in Aries, then the Revelation 12 sign did not happen on Feast of Trumpets. It happened in Elul. But what's incredible about that is nowhere in the Revelation 12 scripture does it say Feast of Trumpets at all or even that it has to be the beginning of the year or anything. It just talks about the star sign being Virgo and the, you know, clothed in the sun, moon in her feet, and the crown of 12 stars. So it, 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 there's nothing that says it has to be Feast of Trumpets. The thing about Elul is it's actually the month of repentance, turning back to the Lord, basically, you know, he the, talks about the king being in the field. Um, it, it's a time of reflection and really examining and getting right with the Lord. So wouldn't it actually make a lot of sense if the Revelation 12 sign, this huge sign, was in Elul as a means of, I'm giving you these few years here to turn back to me to get right and everything else. So I think that actually fits really well. It's actually, I don't, I don't think it's a, a bad thing if the Revelation 12 sign didn't happen on Feast of Trumpets. So again, I was just being consistent, kind of looking back all through history to see if we put, you know, Passover in the month where the sun is in Aries, what happens to things that we've already seen. And that was, that was one of the main ones. Um, okay, I think that was the main stuff that I wanted to tell you with regarding the upcoming high watch dates. Yeah, so, all right, I'll get to my dream. Um, again, I got to give Kevin a whole lot of a credit here with, with the interpretation because he found some pretty awesome stuff. Um, but anyway, the dream was... It was night and I was on a runway and I was outside of a huge airplane. Um, there are bombs going off, explosions going off. It was definitely like a war zone feel to it. Um, I'm outside basically inspecting the aircraft before we get on and take off, but I was, I was kind of like making sure everything was good. Um, and the whole time that I'm doing this, there's a soundtrack to my dream. Now, I, I can't recall ever having a dream that had a soundtrack, but it's truly as if I'm watching a movie of the dream and there's a song playing behind it. You know, like in a movie, at the really climactic points, you'll have this awesome song playing. Well, so bombs are going off, I'm on the runway. It's like, you know, we're getting, there's a lot of um, duress. You know, we're really about to get on the plane and take off. and. Johnny Cash's When the Man Comes to Town is playing. Okay, if you, if you haven't heard that song, go listen to it because there's scripture all through it. But it also talks, I mean, it talks everything from the, you know, the uh, parable of the virgins with their oil. And it has lots of reference to the four horsemen. There's a, there's a lot of Revelation references in there. So it's very timely, first of all. But the fact that I would be having this end times scene with that playing in the background was just really next level. It was kind of amazing. But, um, and if that wasn't enough, checking the plane with me, he wasn't really doing much other than just like talking to me while I'm like doing something with the plane basically. And, um, was Johnny Cash himself. And he was like basically going to be on the plane with us and everything else. Interesting. This just occurred to me that he would be the dead in Christ rising first. Cause I'm pretty sure he got saved at, later in life. But, um, and, and he says, he says, um, so while his song is playing, he's not singing it to me, but his song is playing and he's talking with me and he's like, um, you know, there will be three rescues. He says, um, don't you know how many verses are in my song? And he said, you know, it, it wasn't, um, this isn't verbatim, but the gist was the three rescues are a reward. And the sooner one believes, the sooner they'll go in a rescue, basically. Um, and that was pretty much the end of the dream. So what, what that, what that was a confirmation of me uh, for was that, and you know me, I'm not a partial rapture guy at all. If you were a believer in Christ, if you were born again, you were going in the rapture. But as we talked about before with the harvest models, with the, um, and actually Jaco talks about the uh, temple model and the harvest model. And then Barry's talked about, Dr. Barry's talked about, you know, um, the uh, barley and the wheat and the and the fruit so we, we have these models all through scripture and it would make total sense that there's the rapture the one that everyone 
is calling the rapture, which happens before the seals are opened. Okay, we're not in the seals yet. If you read your Bible, it's very plain that we're not in seals yet. Um, but there's the rapture that happens before the seals. Then there is the moment when all those who come out of the great tribulation, okay, are while those are while the twenty four elders are there, when the seals are being opened. Later in that whole section, you have those who come out of the great tribulation. Now, um, and again, that's another. I believe that's another resurrection event after the two witnesses, representing you know they're kind of a, a type and shadow of Christ because they lay dead in the streets for three days and then they will rise. So as Dr. Barry and others have hinted at, that's probably the mid trib rapture. Okay, and then and then at the very end basically of the second coming that we all realize there'll be another one that's a post-trib event for um, uh, those, I guess, for Israel who's believed in those other tribulation saints who maybe were still alive at the at the mid-trib one or something. I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but that would represent the fruit harvest, right? Um, it talks about the blood being as uh, up to the... Um, the horse's girdle kind of thing so and that represents you know, grapes being crushed so i've always kind of thought well not always but since i've been watching here these past three or four years I've, I've really felt that kind of three rapture model again not the same as a partial rapture here what i'm saying not the same as a partial rapture at all but it's just those who don't believe during the first rapture who haven't come to christ yet they won't go obviously but then they will believe maybe they will be martyred by the antichrist and then at the mid-trip event, they will most likely go, according to this model. And then at the end, those who also come to faith would, you know, be in that, that last event. So that was one of the things that he says. Now, but what's interesting is he says, don't you know how many verses were in my song? And it uh, it has way more than three verses. But so that was one of the things I took to Kevin. And I was like, what? I don't get this. It doesn't make sense. There's more than three verses. So it was one of those kind of mysterious God dream things. And Kevin was like, well, wait a second. He starts the, he starts the song by speaking a verse of revelation. He ends the song by speaking a verse of revelation. And in the middle of the song, there is a verse from revelation 22 that he speaks. Okay. So there are three sections of revelation in the song verses of scripture. So that was that was all the Holy Spirit through Kevin. That was pretty awesome that he discovered that. And so then we did more research and led to do more just kind of unpacking of the dream. And um, so Johnny Cash, obviously the Apostle John was the one that was, you know, caught up uh, through the window in the heavens to witness the seals being opened and everything. So here I am right before the rapture talking with Johnny, not John, but Johnny. And then um, if you put Johnny Cash in Gematria, simple Gematria, his, his name is 117, which again, Dr. Barry talked about 117 a lot, you know, that, that dividing, that separating um, of, you know, the church being the, the age of grace, the church being taken out, right? So um, I thought it was interesting that that's what his name means, that his name is in simple Gematria is 117. Um, Trying to think what other kind of nuggets we we got from the dream, but but please feel free um, in the comments whatever the Holy Spirit gives you. As always, I love I love reading your comments um, because no doubt you all will have even more insight. I just love how many layers there are to the dreams from the Lord. So um, yeah, that was it basically. That you know it may get pretty may get pretty hairy here. It may get pretty crazy with the bombs going off and 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 stuff, but we're going to be on the flight out of here uh, before any of the seals happen. And um, then there will be two other res rescues after that. I, I do believe that. And again, we're in a high watch period. Like I would say the highest watch of all time as each next high watch period is right <laughs> with each one that passes. The next one is that much more of a high watch period. So be encouraged brothers and sisters. Um, yeah. I just pray this video will be a blessing to you that the Holy Spirit will stir your spirit up to um, just be excited about his coming. We say, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you today, brothers and sisters. Um, love you so much. God bless you. As we always say on this channel, in everything we say and do, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. See you again soon. God bless.